One other really cool export option in Substance Painter is going up here to File, Export Textures, and if you choose Sketchfab in here, you're going to see it's going to go to JPEG, it's going to go ahead and set all these uh, things in here. I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what, just for testing purposes, I'm going to drop these eyes down to 1024, the skull will keep it 2048, teeth will drop down to 1024, and then iris will drop down to 1024. So let's go ahead and say Export. And I'm going to uncheck Publish because I'm not ready to do that yet. And I'm going to call this a test. And you can go ahead and put in the description and tags if you want to. That's going to launch a browser here. And there we go. It's already uh, kind of uploaded in here. And let's go ahead and say, go in here to 3D settings. Let's make this just a little bigger. And we're working right out of the web browser right now. So you can hold down uh, Alt and left mouse drag, and that's going to drag your HDR image around. We are using the PBR renderer. Uh, you can turn the wireframe on or off. Underneath the background here, we can load in an image. We can just use a simple color, which I'll probably end up doing, just doing like maybe a dark, dark grayish. Or actually, these are kind of cool too. Maybe a dirty dark here. Or you can use an ambient environment. Here's a man of blur. So again, as we're holding down Alt and moving this uh, environment around. Or you can just turn off the uh, background completely and just have it transparent. But uh, we'll go ahead and leave that on. And if you may be wondering, like, well, how do I change my environment or my lighting model here? So you can actually go in here under the lighting tab. So that's going to be next. Uh, let's let's pick. Let's just do a let's do an image, and we'll do that dirty dark. That's fine. But the the lighting environment is still lighting the uh, skull and causing the reflection. So let's go over here to lighting, and down here you're going to see the environment is turned on. The orientation is going to rotate it. You can choose the brightness. It's at 1.7 now. And just like when we were in Marmoset, you can go through here and you can dumb this down and you can add in your own uh, your own lights. We'll go ahead and leave that, I don't know, somewhere on 1.35. If you wanted to cast shadows, you can uh, have that on. You can change the light intensity if you want to. And here's where you can change your presets. So instead of in that industrial room, you can say, you can put the, that desert mountain scene, pine tree arch, kind of play around with these and see if any of these kind of speak out to you. Now up here at the very top, uh, we have lights, but they're turned off right now. So let's go ahead and turn that on. And it looks like ground shadows we can also turn on. So now we can see our ground shadows here. So as we're moving the, and again, uh, holding on Alt, we'll rotate our lights as well as our lighting environment here. And you're gonna see our shadows move. You can also change it from a shadow catcher over here just to a baked AO. So it just gives you kind of a little contact shadow there. Over here, you can say change uh, to a lighting preset. So here's your basic three-point lighting uh, that we had created. If you choose any one of these lights, you're going to get some light options. So on here, we're going to go ahead and say cast shadows on. You can go through here and you can change the the intensity of this light or the color of this light. So here's kind of our key light here. Let's go ahead and say cast shadows on for that one as well. And this uh, final light here, we'll go ahead and turn on cast shadows. And let's go back to the very bottom here. We'll turn this brightness down. So now you can see these lights are doing most of the lighting uh, in our scene. Of course, you can load up a whole bunch of cool presets. Here's Evil Genius. That's kind of a cool one. So again, just uh, you can go through here. And each individual one of these lights, when you just go and click on it, you can go through and you can move the light around, or you can just choose it in your scene. And these are directional lights, so you'll, rotation is what's going to be doing most of the heavy lifting here. Uh, but of course, you can change it from a directional light to a point light, and that's just going to be like a like a light bulb in your scene. You can do a spotlight, and you can do a hemi light, but that's just going to act like a directional light anyway. So you can pick these, and let's go ahead and do a full moon preset here. Moving right along, let's go ahead and choose our materials here. Uh, we are in the work, metalness workflow, so that's not, uh, instead of spec and gloss, we're using the metal and roughness. And up here at the very top, you can see we're in the iris material. So here's our base color. And we do have emission, so we can turn uh, open up the emission, and it does have our texture in here. So make sure that iris matte.emissive uh, is in your emission here. You can turn it on and off. You can see that's the difference that it's going to make. You can over crank it again, and uh, we can do some posts on that as well. Uh, but let's go through here, and let's change it from the iris matte over here to the skull matte. It's going to have the biggest... Uh, effect here. So it's going to kind of highlight what the material is assigned to the skull parts here. So our base color is plugged in. We have metalness plugged in. Specular you can go through here and you can kind of change it. Uh, 0.5 seems like it's being okay. You can make it anisotropic or not. I'm going to probably leave that alone. Over here under normal map, 
If you notice that your normal map looks a little bit weird, this is again where you can switch from DirectX to OpenGL, but this is, uh, we don't have to flip that in this case. Also, if you're going to use a bump map instead, you can change it to that, but we're using a normal map, obviously. If you have displacement, you can go ahead and load that up. Um, Subsurface scattering we're not using, but we can turn that on for the teeth. Uh, ambient occlusion is turned on, and we can also have it occlude the specular, so we'll go ahead and turn that on. Uh, cavity, we don't really have a cavity map. We could bake one out, uh, or we can also try to just load in the skull AO into that cavity, and that'll kind of darken up some of those areas way deep in there, so we'll go ahead and turn that on. If you have an opacity map, this is where you can turn that on and plug that in. And if you just had a single-sided and you want to render it double-sided, you could, like if you had a single-sided cape or something. So just go through here, your skull and your eyes. Make sure everything's plugged in correctly. Occlude specular. Again, maybe throw your AO into your cavity here. Eyes, AO here. If you have any emissive, which in the case of the eyes we don't, but the iris we do. And then finally, the teeth material. Include specular, and we'll go ahead and throw the teeth AO in here, just why not. And on here we can turn on subsurface scattering for the teeth. And uh, we don't have like a thickness map or anything, but we can go through here and just kind of crank or over crank this and change the different profile colors in here. And turn translucency on or off, just kind of get a little bit more of a tooth kind of waxy feel in here. That should be it for our materials, and then we'll go in here to our post-processing which is going to be turned on by default. Uh, we can do screen spaced AO. We can go through here and we can over crank that intensity. So just kind of set those objects together a little bit better here. Uh, grain we can turn on or off. Uh, sharpness, if you want to kind of sharpen up this, uh, this amount. Again, if you over crank, it's going to do some crazy stuff. So maybe just a little touch of it. Uh, chromatic aberration we talked about in Aaron Marmoset as well. We can go ahead and throw a little bit of that in there. You can also vignette it a bit, just kind of focus the eye in there. Uh, bloom here, you can go ahead and turn that on. And this is where you can kind of go through here and change these settings so it's not not like there's Vaseline on the lens or something, but maybe get a little bit of bloom going. Tone mapping, you can go through here, you can change it to different types, see if any of those work for you. And then you can go through here and you can change the contrast of the exposure uh, to kind of get that look that you're looking for. But we'll go ahead and set that back to zero there. Uh, color balance, you can go in here and kind of do, again, this is all just post-processing stuff, so if you want to change any of that, and then anti-aliasing, you can have that on or off. Uh, you can have annotations, you can do animations in here, uh, virtual reality is kind of a cool one, I uh, haven't really played with that, and also sound, if you want to uh, add any of that. So anyway, go through here, make any changes that you want, and then when you're done, you can say save settings, and you can exit. And then now you can send this to anybody. You can go, uh, well, you can go ahead and publish it if you want to, and that'll put it into your your models here. You can go into the properties, and you can say, hey, there's a description, the categories, and all that good stuff. And then eventually, it'll be put out here. And then if you wanted to, for example, you know, here's my model here. And I have this available, so people can download it if they want to. If I scroll down, you're going to see there's a share button. So you can copy that link and then you can just post that into your ArtStation page or anything and they'll have uh, availability to kind of go through your model here and they can check it out. Then go into full screen, which, uh, yeah, okay, that captures okay. You can hit escape to get out of that. And if you ever wanted to send anybody this and uh, have it be a turntable, so you can go, again, go down here to your share, go ahead and copy that link, and then when you go to paste this link to somebody or put it somewhere, you can add question mark, Auto spin equals one. And then when your 3D model loads, uh, it'll go ahead and be auto spinning. And that's going to be, uh, and the, probably this will be embedded in the page so you won't have all the, the stuff around. And of course, if you want that to spin slower, you can say like 0 0.5. Yeah, but I thought that was kind of a cool feature you could add to that as well. And just showing an example, uh, here in Sketchfab we have photogrammetry, and I put my photogrammetry model into Sketchfab here, so you're going to see it's embedded in the file, or in the page here. So if we go in here to edit this page, all you got to do is say, uh, you can do a Marmoset viewer or a Sketchfab. Uh, it'll link to your Sketchfab here, so when you're done, that'll put your Sketchfab model in here. And then when you go view this on your profile, or anybody views it on your profile here, and they go through and they click on it, they can just click this play. It'll go ahead and load that 3D model. 
and then now they have access to go through and kind of spin around your model and uh, check it out. And they can go through here and they can make sure your rendering and uh, settings are uh, what they are. They can view in VR if they want to. They can hold down Alt and they can move your lighting around. All that good stuff.